All right, I'm back to my old setup and I'm making a video here on the last trading day. So that's the 30th of December, Friday. And I'm doing it just as the market opens. So I'm we're about 30 minutes in. Not the best time to do a video because really anything can happen. But I am not in control of timing sometimes anyway. We're looking at the SPY. We are down uh, almost 1%, basically 1% across the board, if I can make that average. <laughs> which means we basically evaporated yesterday's gains. I don't think I made a video yes, uh, for yesterday, so it doesn't really change much. Um, although I did make a video the day before where we were bearish. I remain bearish. Now, I don't think we're going to go to to crazy lows today. I, we might be able to touch the old sort of lows down here on the SPY. But it doesn't really matter about this this year. I mean, next week or next year, let's say, uh, I think we're going lower, right? I haven't really hidden that thesis um, since we've been rising and I've been sort of doing videos since this move up here. So I'll call this move down, the move up, uh, the the extent to which it advanced surprised me a bit, but still I'm, I'm bearish here on this and I've sold into it. So looking for another move down to, to make it two out of two since I've done the videos. Obviously I've been trading for over a decade now. So where do I think we're going to go? I think today we'll go sort of sideways down. We'll basically end up where we are, where we are now, which means essentially evaporating uh, yesterday's gains. Now let's look across the board. The SPY is, I think, is sort of following other indices, namely the NASDAQ. Let's look at the NASDAQ. So you can see here we've also uh, totally reversed yesterday's gains. We may end up at the lows again. So at this second last support, let's call it 260. So 260 for the NASDAQ. Uh, I'm not even going to go through the levels on the up on the upside because I don't think we're going to be testing any levels on the upside. Uh, I mean, we could have a small bounce, but that was really what the Santa rally was for. I thought this would be the next uh, resistance, but we haven't even gone anywhere close to that. Even on the SPY, we haven't really moved to the next support. I've done videos on that. I'm not covering it now again because I don't think we're going to get there. So NASDAQ, I'm looking for a close around here. Dow Jones, which has been very strong, but you can see now, you know, it's failed to test its resistance at 33,000, call it 400, 500. And we'll basically, not today, but I think next week we will be testing the 32,500 zone on the Dow Jones. And then once we lose that, that's where these targets come into play. So it'll be there. Then and this will take some doing to get down here. Then we go there. Then we basically go to the all-time lows. Uh, I do think if the NASDAQ is starting to flush all-time lows, if I can say all-time lows, you know what I mean, it's down here, then you'll see the Dow Jones really accelerate and, and start to catch up on the downside. Russell 2000 is a bit like the SPY, it's sort of in no man's land going sideways, I see it closing the day a little lower than where it is, uh, but it doesn't really matter what happens today because it's just sideways action, as long as we're not making new downside, which I don't think we're going to do. So as long as we're reversing yesterday's gain, which was quite nice, right? It looked quite nice. As long as we're red today, I think I don't see any reason why the thesis changes. So down we go uh, into next year, hitting this second last level and then this last level and then flushing. Again, the NASDAQ will lead the way. So I'm really watching the NASDAQ more than any of the others. The VIX really shouldn't cover it. Uh, just sideways. I'm looking for this 26 zone to be recaptured at some point. Certainly not today. So, but anyway, as long as it's green with, when the market's red, at least it's acting a little more normal than it has done recently because it's basically been broken and to me still remains broken. Let's look at yields. Yields are becoming the most important element to the markets, in my opinion, again. So the one year you can see obvious resistance, obvious sort of support around here. Uh, support has held. It did look pretty bad, pretty bearish. When we were here, it looked like we are going to lose it and go lower and by that i mean touching the ascending support uh i can delete this now it's i haven't touched these these uh indi um levels or indicators for some time actually because they've remained accurate and i've been on holiday but anyway this is really the tight range i'm looking for a breakout not today maybe immediately into next year but you know yields are going back up i think that's the the grand theme so especially the long uh dated part of the yield curve but anyway let's let's look at it from the short towards the long, you can see the second, the two year has broken out of this descending line. That was for me important. Now it's sort of got to take out this little 4.45, let's call it zone. And then boom, go back up to 4.56, 5.7 mini levels. I'm not going to draw them yet. 
uh, and then we go back to the to the old highs. I can delete some of this stuff. It's really uh, just graffiti at this point. So yeah, looking for this two year to go. Two years the most important one. That's the one the Fed needs to be in line with essentially, uh, and the ten years the most. It's between the two and the ten, and that's really where you calculate the inversion. Let's say, but five year going up just like the two, just like the ten will be. You can see it's hit its resistance of around four right four so if you can see a close above four and i would say above 4.04 if i can say that really this little area here where this was resistance it's the highest point since the flush it's also where this was support so if i really want to be accurate i would say 4.04 .04, close above that would would be very bullish um and then we can look for for a, a test of the descending line here get rid of this graffiti so yields back up you can see where i where I'm going with that, the 10 year, very similar. So we're looking with, we're, we're there, we're testing the resistance of 3.9, let's say. Once we can get to, yeah, this blue target, whoops, a bit too big, uh, and close above this descending line, then we're basically going to go test 4.2. And once you're testing 4.2, you just go sideways and, and break out. That's the most likely scenario. So very bullish on the 10 year, the third year, same thing. So by the time we test this, we'll probably be around there, maybe even here actually, so lower, which will coincide with this. So yeah, test of that, then go down and then break out. So very, not very, but bullish on yields. Let's look at the dollar, which is very interesting. So I thought we might break out of this when we were around here, but we've gone a little lower. So we're testing 103, 103.5. Today we've touched it already. To me, even if we break below this, I mean, if we break below it, then okay, this for me is the very strong support. So we could go down here. I still feel like we'll break out of this descending line before we get here. So this is a very tight range. So I'm I'm not bullish, not well, I'm not bearish. I am bullish, but I've already made the point that even if we break out of this, that the dollar has a long way to go to test old highs, unlike yields. I mean, first it's got to break out and close out of this descending line. Then it's got to really recapture this zone, okay? Um, sort of between here, let's call it 107 and, yeah, 107 and 108. Close above that. And then it has to touch this. And I don't think it will break out of this for some time. And then it's got to break the old highs. And for this big move here in the DXY, you know, 10%. I mean, it's possible that, you know, especially if the market's crumbling to new lows, it will really break out, but it's it requires a lot of strength. Um, so you'd see a lot of the FX move. So the euro, and I do think it's overextended the euro. I do see it going down. Um, then you'd need the USD Japanese yen breaking out of this and, and rising quite a bit uh, to, 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 to reverse what the Japanese central bank has done, essentially the, the moves that it's, um, facilitated and then you'd see the Jap uh, the the pound going down so there's quite a lot of moves in fx that will take place if the dollar breaks out and this is this would just be a reflection of what happens in fx but i think the point is i'm i'm still bullish moderately bullish the the dollar especially with the markets going down the yields going up but i do see how much strength is required to go all the way back up and i i kind of don't see that happening but that doesn't matter. Uh, we'll just take every day as it comes. Let's look at gold and silver. And gold and silver just sort of refuse to break down. I still think this is going to happen. Um, I mean, gold is just, I almost need to start drawing the, the, the ceiling over here because it's really hitting. You can see 1825. It did break out of that just momentarily above even 1830 uh, on, on Tuesday. But Still, it's about the close and, you know, venturing up there is, is nice and cute. But if you don't close, uh, you know, that day didn't even close above 18, 1820. But 1820 to 1830, serious resistance. Um, you know, and today, again, we touched sort of 1820. If you don't break out of it and then you start to close below the ascending support, then you are going to go lower. At least that's the, the likelihood. That's the point of technical analysis. It's not guarantee it's just sort of plain chances and, and probability silver which is just more aggressive you can see that's had similar resistance here 24 let's call it 24 30 uh and as we lose 
you know, the more time you don't break out, the the more likely you are to, to go lower because maybe you've got to prove that you have significant support before going and testing it again and breaking out. So look how, how tight we're getting to this ascending support. I think if we close below, especially these last couple of days, let's call it below 23, whatever, 35, you know, here, then you're kind of guaranteed, if I can say that, to go lower. I don't know how much lower before it finds support because it's been very strong, you know, outperforming markets generally. So this is a serious buy the dip candidate for me. And, and that's been the point for a while. So gold and silver, very impressed on how strong they are still. But um, I still think they're going to go lower. And how do I trade them? I trade them by playing the GDX and GDXJ, which follow the markets too. And I'm bearish the market. So if, you, if you're bearish the markets and you also think gold and silver is going to go down, you could probably get these significantly lower. So I'm looking for a breakdown of, of this ascending line. I st yeah, where my targets are, you know, once we get here, I, st I think if we get here and the markets are flushing, we will actually go lower, but I'll be buying here. I like to get in, you know, without trying to guess the bottom, the all-time bottom. So I'm going to leave these targets where they are. They think they speak for themselves. GDXJ, very similar. I think it's even outperforming. No, it's about the same. Uh, you, you know, you can see the same resistance on the way up, the ascending support on the way down. I think if we get here, it'll be there. These targets are nice and small. I prefer smaller targets. I should really redo these. But yeah, that's it, really. I will cover Bitcoin, which is finally starting to, and I haven't moved this in, in maybe even weeks. Um, okay, it dropped. It, it lost the ascending support earlier than I thought, but it, you know, it was still technical analysis. And I think that Bitcoin really operates on technical analysis more than, than most other asset classes. So... I think this worked very well. It, you know, flushes down here a bit early, goes sideways, which is what I expect after a move down. And now, to be honest, it looks like this move low is coming kind of perfectly in, in line with, with what I drew some time ago. It doesn't really matter, you know, what day it happens. But the point is, I do think we're going to go back down to test this 15,500 level in Bitcoin is that going to coincide with the uh, NASDAQ hitting, new, you know, testing its old lows? Yes, it would make perfect sense. And then you'll see, you'll see more excitement in the sector. You'll see micro strategy, which has been in the spotlight recently. Um, you know, a lot of these Bitcoin miners are going bankrupt, not just Bitcoin miners. They, they mine several coins. You know, they also change what they're mining. Ethereum, of course, and I'm in high, for example, very, very lightly, and I see it going lower and lower, which is beautiful. But I also have read a few articles, if you think about the energy crisis we have now and how much energy costs, you know, some of them could go bankrupt. So I am not buying yet, not only because I think crypto overall will go lower, but I want to see a few more crypto miners go bankrupt. I've seen one or two already. Uh, I forgot their names, but one or two have gone bankrupt. And I don't really want to buy into something which is going to go bankrupt either. And I think it, prices will stay low for some time. You know, I don't think the market overall, including the crypto market, will, will bounce until several months into 2023. So I don't, I'm in no hurry to add to anything related to crypto. But I do want to see the price drop because I, if I do buy something, I like it cheaper. So yeah, Bitcoin still bearish. Everything bearish except yields except a little bit the dollar. I do think the dollar will, will break out at this descending line. Volatility, volatility will go up. And obviously long-term gold and silver and mine is very, very bullish, but I think they will also go lower the markets. That's my quick recap. We'll see how the markets are doing. I might make another video tonight. I'm going to be back to regularly scheduled programming, but otherwise, happy trading.